This is it folks, the final level of UN Squadron. We are taking the fight directly to the Project 4 Fortress in the heart of the enemy's mountain base. You can feel that in the air? That's the tension. Alright, Skinny Ty is going to give us the lowdown. He'd like us to shoot the core, which kind of makes me think he's been playing the wrong series of shooting games, but um, well, no matter. Anyway, since this is the last mission, it's my last chance to run some little anecdotes by you while I'm playing the game. So for example, did you know that the old fella here, every time you leave the store, says something to you? And in my brain, every single time I hear it spoken in this old man voice saying, Thanks! You be careful now! Which, you know, that's the kind of thing that you need to know. Anyway, you might notice that I didn't buy every single weapon in the store, even though I've got tons of cash right now. And the reason for that is that the Efreet holds so many weapons that it can actually get to be a little overwhelming. If you're in the middle of a firefight and you need to get to your Mega Crush or find your Phoenix missiles, you don't want to have to search through 25 different weapons. You know, it's an easy way to get yourself killed. So I tend to stick to ones that are going to be useful, a lot of which you'll, you'll see why I chose them later on. I'm starting with the, the Cluster Bomb because this passageway in particular has some very annoying planes that come at you from behind. There's not a lot of weapons that can get to them before they can damage you. My favorite, the Phoenix missiles, they take too long to loop around, so you just park yourself up here, uh, you know, fire off a few cluster shots, and you're good to go. Coming into the cave here, we see a couple of new enemies. There are these little tiny rockets on the ceiling, those orange fellows, uh, and I think that they drop down if you fly underneath them and maybe they explode or something, but they only take one shot to kill, so that hasn't happened to me in years and years. I couldn't even tell you what would happen. Um, the other thing that we have are these giant rocket-powered boulders, which for whatever reason fly up to the ceiling, then drop down and explode into small chunks if you haven't destroyed them. So um, that's original, I guess. Not too dangerous, all things considered. Um, overall, it is, it's a fairly difficult level, because it is the last one in the game, but it's nothing too out of depth with what we've seen so far. I'd say that the canyon level is similar in difficulty, um, maybe even has a harder boss. So the one thing that this level has going for it is that it's much longer than most of the other levels in the game. In fact, I'd say the greatest danger in this level is not any particular section, but it's just that little hits everywhere are going to wear you down until you run out of fuel and get killed by something. So I'm going to try to play this safe. I'm going to use the same tactic I did in the cave and basically just fire off Phoenix missiles non-stop. Hope that they'll intercept a lot of enemies before they even become a threat for me to deal with. Uh, I have a lot of Phoenix missiles actually, and as you're about to see, I shouldn't run out anytime soon. There, did you catch that? I just picked up the single best weapon pickup in the game. Uh, it gives you far more of everything than any other weapon pickup, including Mega Crushes. So we get to see the effects of that later. So here's a fun little section. I like these turrets coming in on these weird tracks. They look kind of like crazy straws. I don't know who designed this fortress, but they had a fun time doing it. A little bit of fuel down at the bottom to keep me going. That's appreciated. And coming up here, up top, is a little alcove that's got our good friend the unicorn. He's going to make our life an awful lot easier as we go to face the one and only mini-boss in all of UN Squadron. This tunnel only exists to provide dramatic tension. Okay, here he comes. Look at this ugly feller. It's some sort of gigantic, super fat VTOL aircraft. I'm going to rearrange its face by firing bullpup missiles into it, which is pretty satisfying because there's like 12 missiles per shot. Uh, and for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, I just switched to the Thunder Laser. Um, it's a weapon that I do enjoy quite a bit, and I kind of wish that I'd had a chance to use it more in the game, but sadly the A-10 does not use them. Anyway, back to bullpups, and we should have this guy taken out. There we go. So, you know, fun while it lasted. And now for the main event. So, Project 4 is what I'm guessing this thing is called, because they never really make that clear. But uh, Project 4 is basically a gigantic flying battleship with lots of turrets and things on top of it that shoots at you from all angles. Um, it's a pretty appropriate last boss for a 90s era shooter. You know, classic anime design. Um, so once again, the, the name of the game is to shoot off as many turrets and, you know, wingtips and things as you can before heading in for the core. The problem with this guy being that there are some turrets like this one on the left side of the screen that you can't destroy no matter what you do. The other problem with this boss is that the part that you need to shoot to kill it is in the middle. You can see it lighting up there as my T-lasers go through. Uh, and so it's really hard to get in with your Vulcan cannon. So you need to use weapons that have a, a way of piercing through the scenery. So the T-laser is excellent for that. The cluster bomb is reasonable. The Phoenix actually will fly and seek out targets no matter where they are. So that's kind of nice. Of course, the best weapon of all is to, to use is the Mega Crush, which can damage everything on screen no matter where it is. 
Uh, you might have noticed as I'm paging through my weapons that because of that great weapon pickup that I got earlier, I now have a staggering four Mega Crutches in my arsenal. Which, really, that's almost unfair to these guys. You know, every time I get hit I can fire one of those off, which is, you know, it's kind of a get out of die free card that I can play way more times than should be necessary. I'm glad that they chose to end UN Squadron with one of these fly back and forth and blow up all the little parts fights. It's probably not as cool as the Forest Fortress, which I think is my favorite boss in the game, but it is very epic. So now you can see that I've destroyed the outer casing and these piston things are there. I think their only role is to soak up damage while you're trying to damage the blue gem. I don't have a whole lot of weapons that fired down, so I'm going to get them really close here and use up the rest of my cluster shot. See what I can do to that core. See if I can knock out some pistons while I'm at it. We'll use up a few Phoenix missiles also while we're here. Oh, you know what that means. Time to break out the big guns. Haha! <laughs> Better luck with Project 5, losers. That's it, folks. Explosions everywhere. This is the end of UN Squadron. This big cash bonus, which I don't think I have any purpose for, but, you know, bragging rights, I guess. And $75,000 worth of special weapons that I didn't even get around to using. Well, you know, better to be prepared, right? And this is the part where if we were playing a Gradius game, we would have to make our daring escape as the station comes down around us. But we're not, so we just get to watch as uh, Mickey decides to blow up some completely harmless fighters. Well, that was actually a pretty nice move he did there. I'm a little bit sad that these purple bomber guys never came back into the game. I would have liked to fight them as a regular enemy. Also, the way he just flew between that guy's thing of bombs, that was a little bit uh, too risky for my blood. And what do we have here? It's Mickey's absentee friend, Shin and Greg. Where have they been? Aww, look how sad they are. Isn't it adorable? I have never been so touched by the horrors of war. But what's this? He's okay! Nice close-up on the uh, the Efreet. The best part is that they actually made separate smiling sprites for all the pilots for this scene that you don't see at the end of a normal mission. This is like the extra happy pose. You also get to see the, uh, the pilots with, I think these are the planes that they use in the arcade version, except for me because I've, you know, chosen my own plane. Because if you play the arcade version of UN Squadron, Greg gets the A-10. Look at that, there's a little tiny UN squadron on the tail of, uh, of Shin's fighter. Huh. Well, that's it. We've made it to the end. Thanks for sticking with me as long as you did. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video series. I always let the credits play on video games, much like when I go to the movies. I don't always pay attention to them, but uh, I figure it's, you know, it would be disrespectful to skip them. So I'm going to let them play out. If any of you guys wants to know that the game was programmed by Noriko Kozi Kojima, well, there you go. This is your chance. In the meantime, I want to say, once again, thanks for sticking around. Um, if for some reason you've decided that you like hearing me ramble on about video games, you can always check out the On The Stick podcast, which we do about every two weeks or so. That's at onthestick.com. Uh, and if you want to read some more about this particular Let's Play, I'm going to put a link in the show notes that directs you to uh, the, the, the forum thread where this one started, which has some extra material that you wouldn't have seen if you only watched the videos. And while I'm at it, I'll link to the other Let's Play that I did for that forum, as well as the Let's Play that I did for Brick Road's YouTube channel, where I played a game and, and he commented on it without ever having seen it before, which is an experiment that, you know, kind of worked sometimes. So, you know, go check that out. Well, this is MC Banjo Mike signing off. On behalf of myself and Capcom All Staff, thanks for watching. See you next mission.